Could you stay right here? <laughs> stay in camera view. But, all right, here. Let me help you. Hello, everyone. I like to be in the front, not in the camera. Um, I just want to thank everybody that did the February walk challenge. I know some of you didn't even give me the forms. You just wanted to do it, which I think is terrific. Some of you started walking for the first time or kind of got a uh, pedometer to kind of see what you're moving at. And I think that's the whole th reason I do that walk challenge because February can be a really tough month. Um, so we have the drawing today and I've asked Paula, I have a drum roll from Kathy. third prize because it really isn't just third. There, there are three prizes up for grabs. All right. So the first one is going to be this beautiful bottle of wine. Mix them up, mix them up. Rachel Smith. Rachel Smith. Now Rachel's son is here, so I don't think Rachel is here, but we will put that aside for her. Uh, the next one is a charcuterie board and a bottle of wine for, well, the charcuterie board is for six people from dining, right? Judy Doubleday. Oh. Judy! Woo! We're coming up, Judy! Oh. Judy Doubleday. <laughs> <laughs> this one is for massage. Oh. oh, and if you don't want it, talk to us girls up here. <laughs> or guys. Or, or guys, yeah, you do need it. David Riker. Oh. oh. All right. He's in the show. He's picked up the mic. All right, Carly, anything else? You have to announce? Uh, it's green walk from the 26th? Not yet. Uh, okay. Way further from the term, but we'll get there. Okay. All right. Um, grab the agenda really quick. Next up to give an update on the scholarship committee, Marilyn Keltenborn. Watch the wires. <laughs> The um, scholarship committee raised, well, the Beverwick residents raised um, $35,726 in this most recent campaign. And that's only the checks that have come into the Beverwick office. Some checks go directly to the foundation. Can so we don't yet have. You can't hear me? No. no. Yeah, we're, we're doing that. Try now. Can you hear? Oh. Yes. There we okay. Go. <laughs> the scholarship fund raised $35,726 in this most recent campaign, but that's only the money that has come into the Beverwick office. Some funds go directly to the foundation, and we do not yet have that data. Um, but we give the checks out in the fall. Last fall, 16 students received the checks. Five of them were seniors, four juniors, three were entering sophomore year, and four were freshmen. Um, yesterday, Jim McElroy, who's the chair of the committee, delivered to the members of the committee five applications for, um, that we will be reviewing in April for um, next year. So that is, um, yeah, we don't yet know how many will be receiving the scholarship for their freshman year. And the average donation from the data that we have currently was $310.66. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. And thank you for your donations. <laughs> Certainly, I second that. Thank you all for your donations, and thank you to the scholarship committee that meets um, on a regular basis and keeps that all organized and reviewing all the candidates. So we definitely have some good applicants this year, so thank you again. Um, <clears throat> next on the agenda, we have um, Albert Seikowitz, who's going to give an update on the nominating committee.
Thank you, Paula. Well, there have been some changes in the uh, election process for the uh, seven candidates for the uh, positions on the resident council for the term beginning June 1st. Uh, we had been working on the premise that we would have nine candidates for the seven positions that we would be doing a balloting in the uh, beginning of uh, May. However, things have changed. One of the nine candidates has elected to have his name removed from consideration. So that, of course, leaves us with eight candidates for the seven positions, which is a rather difficult number in order for us to actually have a balloting. One of the eight names that are remains is mine, and I am withdrawing my name for consideration so that we will have exactly the seven members presented to you in the month of uh, May and April uh, for your selection uh, as the candidates for the term beginning on June 1st. I always felt rather uncomfortable about being one of the candidates for election because, because of the structure of the bylaws, which are rather awkward, I had the position of forming the nominating committee and forming the nominating committee and being responsible for choosing the candidates, it seemed to me an ethical problem about claiming one of the positions for myself. But with a number of people suggesting that they would like to see me returning for a second term uh, on the uh, resident council, I considered having my name submitted as long as we had an actual balloting, because then there was a possibility that I would be rejected as a candidate. <laughs> but there was a possibility. So, but now that we have only eight, I think it is much more comfortable for me personally not to accept a candidacy uh, for the resident council. So as, time to, uh, as the situation stands now, and it always seems to be subject to change month to month, that next month, uh, which is uh, April, the seven remaining candidates will have roughly uh, a minute or so to reintroduce themselves to you, to tell you uh, how long they've been here, uh, the kind of activities they've been involved in here at Beverwick, and then, uh, presuming no other new candidates come, and the slate is always open until April 30th for anybody else who wishes to be considered for a nomination. Then, in actual April, we will have the seven presented to you for essentially a ratification that uh, they will be your uh, chosen representatives for uh, the council beginning Jan uh, excuse me, June 1st. Uh, we have a lot of questions, I'm sure, today about dining situations, but are there any questions remaining for me? Yes, please. Are the nominations still open? Nominations are still open that any resident may submit anybody up until April 30th. So I, I have something for you to consider. If another nominee presents themselves, you're having withdrawn your name from <laughs> consideration will not have achieved what you wanted it to do. Uh, you might want to think about staying on the candidate roster. Well, as I mentioned briefly, there's all subject to change. If any <laughs> such person comes, I will look and reconsider my position. But as of things stand now, we will have seven people presented to you next month for the resident council. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Phyllis Bader Burrell is going to give an update on the heart review. I'm going to hold it or you want me to put it in the holder? I'll try to hold it, I think, just so they can hear me. Thank you. Yeah. 
I'm standing in for Cheryl Rees today, the new editor, of course, of the 2024 Heart Review. And this is one last reminder to everyone, if you haven't sent in your talents, your favorite painting, your favorite poem, your favorite uh, photograph, your favorite story, the deadline is the end of March, coming up very soon, March 31st, and we hope to get more. We've had quite a lot of submissions. We're very happy about that. We need more stories, and we've written all the storytellers to tell you, please send in stories. But it's a very short period of time now, but we welcome. And, you know, for those 47 people, I'm sure many of you are out there who submitted for our 2023 Heart Review, it's exciting to see your work in print. Many of you maybe have already done that or you've had shows. But consider it, and uh, we'd love to have you participate in our next edition. Thank you very much. Thank you. And there are guidelines if you don't have yours um, at the front desk. <laughs> okay, and also just while we were talking about the Heart Review, we're going to be doing a marketing event around um, the Heart Review on April 9th, I believe is the date. So we're going to have a panel of residents who submitted to the Heart Review um, to talk about their work, um, and it's just um, and the event is actually a resident referral event. So um, you will see invitations going in your mailboxes shortly um, that inviting you and a guest, somebody who you think might enjoy living at Beverwick in the future and might want to come and see what our residents here have to um, offer and the many talents that we have here. Um, so that will be coming up. So I thank, um, while I encourage definitely to move forward with the Heart Review, because I think it was an excellent publication, um, I want to thank the, the panel ahead of time um, that will be helping us with our marketing event. So it should be a good event. And when you get that resident referral, please think of friends that you might have that um, would like to come see us. All right. And next up, we have Matt, who's going to talk a little bit about dining. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Good afternoon. So everybody's in receipt of the memo, so I'm just going to go over a couple of the highlights just so you guys are aware of what's coming up. So tomorrow we've taken down the plastic wall that separated the bistro piece from the south dining room, which will now be considered the bistro. Um, so we've moved all the furniture from the main space to the south. Um, so starting tomorrow, we'll be servicing lunch out of the bistro. You can entrance, the entrance will be from the, uh, the new retail space down by the Albany room just because they're gonna be doing construction on that main pathway from like seven to three. So uh, if you wanna come for lunch, just come down the West Wing and uh, come on in the back there. Um, Monday, we're gonna switch over continental breakfast to the back room as well, um, to the bistro piece. So um, if you breakfast next week, continental, uh, come see us back there. Um, coffee's still available in the coffee shop. The retail space can be open tomorrow because um, there'll be actually somebody back there to guide it. Um, like I said, we moved the furniture today, so I just want to give you a couple a couple things to heads up for tonight. So tonight is going to be our dry run, um, so any your patience and your is greatly appreciated this evening. Um, so we're going to regroup and tweak tomorrow as necessary. Um, we did lose 14 to 16 seats, um, two of which are round tables. Um, so just be aware that there's only five tables that can accommodate you know, tables of five or more. Um, we, uh, it'll be difficult for us to take, so if we do have more than uh, five tables at one six, it's gonna be difficult for us to take two fours, push them together to create a six, because then we're gonna lose two seats, so we can't do that. <laughs> um, we will have a person available uh, definitely tonight, um, so if we do get on a wait list, like we're probably gonna anticipate, um, and you don't feel like waiting and you wanna just take out, um, you could just have that person, um, somebody will be there to take your order and then fill it for you. Um, just so we're aware, we're almost to the finish line. Uh, we can begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel, and I assure you that it's not a freight train. Right. <laughs> uh, so after this, I um, and I, I speak for not only myself, but probably for Paul as well, that um, I promise we'll have a big, huge party when this whole mess is over. <laughs> <laughs> Questions for me before I head back to get ready for dinner tonight? <clears throat> okay. It's been fun, folks. See you later. <laughs> so just to be clear too, the work that's being done in there, um, we'll be adding acoustical panels 
uh, repainting, recarpeting, um, and I think that's it. And then we have new furniture that's coming in the, for the dining room as well. So that's that's what they've done in the um, bistro space, the south dining room. Uh, so the acoustical panels make a difference. So I think you'll see um, that they will make a difference. Um, so that's that's a positive. And like he said, there is an end in sight. And then each, you know, they're they're saying probably two to three weeks, you know, is what we're talking about in that main space in there. The one piece that might not be complete at the end of the two to three week is the what's going to be going around the perimeter of the dining area but that's okay we can still reopen it um, and have like a construction wall there much like we do in that one portion in the shelf um, and we are going to have to start recalling these areas i guess renaming them maybe <laughs> but um so that might still be uh, you know, under construction after we open, but at least we can move all the tables back in there at that point. Um, so any questions on dining? Will, yeah. will the ramp be done at that same time? So the ramp is gonna be done during this time period, so we're gonna have to figure that out. We talked about them doing it, uh, perhaps doing it at night, um, and we said after dinner one night to do the ramp because um, they figured it'd be one night for rip up and then another night for laying it down. Um, so we still haven't finalized the plans for that, but that was the tentative discussion that nighttime work. And we thought nighttime work might be a little bit more appropriate for that area because um, there's no apartments really right there that will hear it where if it was in this hallway and it was nighttime work, that would be more of a disturbance. Also, if you live in South, you have to go up and down that ramp during the day. Right. Right, so <clears throat> that's why we thought night might be more appropriate. When we actually get the dates of when they want to do it, we'll also look to make sure there's not an event in here. Um, so we'll we'll try and work around that as well. Somebody else had their hand raised. Yes. Um, will there be wheels on the new dining room chairs? Yes. So the question is, are there going to be wheels on the new dining room chairs? And yes, there are. Yes. Plan, are the plans still to reutilize some of those lovely plants that are on the edge? Yes. Yep. We will be reutilizing them. We've even talked to the designer ordering the pots and where we'll be putting them so to re to um, rehome. Perhaps not all of them, but a portion of them, well, definitely. If you don't use all of them, would the rest of them be available to any resident who might want them? <clears throat> that actually came up this morning, um, and we're going to see what we can reuse, and then I think that's exactly what we'll do, that perhaps we can say if anybody's interested in these plants that they're available before. I mean, we don't want to throw away good plants. Right. Right. All right, any other questions on the dining room? I'll talk a little bit more about renovation schedule and where we're at. Um, all right, so uh, the library is still a work in progress. So things that we have to complete in the library, we're gonna be in those um, open spaces next to the fireplace. We're gonna be adding shelves there. Um, so we have to wait for those to come in. And then we're gonna, there's still some books that need to be reshelved. Uh, they will be added there. We're going to add a standing bookcase for the paperback books and order magazine racks that are currently on that um, table that's, that's up. That's not meant to stay there. Uh, so those are the, and then the two chairs that are in the library just don't go. Um, so we're going to be moving them out elsewhere um, in the building and then ordering two new chairs for that space with some color. Um, I think it'll look nice. So. We're looking at something similar to the, the orange chair that's in the lobby and moving that in there. Um, so I have heard some concerns about, we got the tables in last week, so about space in there, so we can evaluate that and see what we're, what we're working with. If we need one less table in there, I'm sure we could find a place for the other table or a smaller table. Um, we're looking at a smaller table for where the current um, reader is on as well. So. Um, things can be manipulated in general um, you know the furniture that we have is the furniture that we have we're not ordering new furniture unless there's something wrong or defective with the furniture that came in so which there is in some of them uh, so we're waiting for replacements on those but I've heard some complaints about um, cushions being too hard yeah. so what we are doing is looking in those specific areas and relocating that furniture to perhaps less 
less um, utilized space um, to sitting areas, not you know sitting areas that we know are used all the time. So while we're not changing it out, we're going to try and rearrange to make sure that um, you know we have the best setting in each sitting area. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so we already talked about the dining, the south dining room, acoustical panels. You'll notice in the south dining room when you go in there, there is a light fixture, a new chandelier. Um, that's not the one we ordered, and they made a mistake and ordered the wrong one. <laughs> However, the one that is coming in doesn't look all that different. It is kind of the same style, but it's not as abstract, I'll say. Um, so what they did is um, they put some temporary downlights in there. Um, so you'll see those as well, but know that lighting has to go into the south dining room still. Um, that has to be fixed. And so we had new furniture come in on the 14th. Um, the art room, we still need a counter in the art room along with the sink and a panel that goes under the sink. Um, and we need one more chair in the art room. So we're still waiting on that. And I think any other renovation updates? For the library too, I'll, I'll get your questions one second, but for the library too, we did order. Um, it's gonna be uh, like a film that's placed on the door, a part of the glass panels that are in there. It does feel a bit like you're in a fishbowl if you're in there with all the glass. So um, the, main, the main doors coming in, they're glass with glass side panels. We're gonna leave those glass, put the film on the two sides. So that's the plan there. Okay, I saw a question. Yep. Uh, what about the uh, all the, the artwork and mirrors that are have yet to be put up on the wall? What's the problem there? So the artwork and the mirrors that have to be put up. The decorators doing that when all the rest of the artwork. So she's waiting for the rest of the in. artwork to come in, and that means we'll will hang the remaining artwork that needs to go up that is currently in the building. Yes. Speaking of artwork, the new entrance to the south dining area mm -hmm. should take people past the, the current art exhibit. Uh, and any, some people who might not have seen it already. And I urge my fellow residents to take some time looking at a rather extraordinary photograph. I agree. So if you couldn't hear that, um, the new pathway to the South Dining Room, which will be the Bistro, um, you get the opportunity if you're coming from the lobby to see all the resident artwork that's up there. Um, but it's always nice, whether you're going in there or not, to take a walk down that hallway because it's always impressive. And that's changed out how often? Two Every two months. Yes. So for the artwork to be hung, we're waiting on the rest of the artwork that we ordered to come in and then hang everything. What about the shelves and stuff? Is that on order also? Because there used to be a shelf where you could put games and all that kind of stuff on it, and I haven't heard a word about that. So if there's a bookshelf that's needed in the area, because we're honestly going to be putting more books in the areas too, so was it a bookshelf that you're referring to? Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Maybe, maybe lower bookcase. Yeah. Yep, so we can definitely add additional. We're going to be ordering more bookcases. So if for some reason, when we went through, it was supposed to be replacing like with like. So if there was a bookcase there, there should be a book place, bookcase that was ordered for that area. Um, but if that's not the case, we will get one there if need be. I happened yeah. to be there when the movers came. Yeah. I didn't know what was wing four, so they dropped it off the bookshelf. Yep. It's, it's halfway down the long hall. I put a little note on it asking, I even asked Frank if we could move it. He said we touched nothing that the movers brought. He wouldn't let anybody move it. In the meantime, all the games and stuff that were in that shelf mm -hmm. are on the floor in the corner. Okay. Uh, and they, I, I told him I would, if they would bring it down there, I'll pick up there and clean that up. But he said we can't do it. Okay. I, I even put a note on it. He said, 
We can put one up there. We have one. So yeah, so there is a bookcase that's in the area that's not being utilized. So we can get we'll get a bookcase in that area because we are starting to move stuff around. We have two chairs, two tables up there now, which is great. Mm -hmm. But they delivered ten chairs. They're to be moved. I don't know what to do with them. They're already to be moved. Yep. Yep. Yes, excess chairs in that same sitting area are to be moved. So any other hands on renovations? So after they complete the dining room, um, which will be the major part, the things that are gonna be left um, are, they're redoing all the common area bathrooms. So that'll be, um, I think the last remaining item. We have done some, um, we've asked them to do some pricing on add-ons, like things that, you know, there's leftover funds. Um, so one of the things we're looking at for spring is, oh, they're definitely doing the putting green. Um, so that'll be done. We were just waiting for the warmer weather and then we're looking at doing something with the shuffleboard, somehow resurfacing that. Last time, the last couple of times we did it, I think it was just us painting it and it, that doesn't last very long. So we're just looking at getting a more permanent solution. Any other add-ons that can think of so that might be some outstanding things but the things included in the original scope were um, the bathrooms so that's going to be the last piece that they do yes this is not inside this is outside um, the farthest south entry right by the road by the road off yeah. the parking lot it's a very steep walkway and we talked mm -hmm. at a previous meeting a couple of meetings ago yep. about getting a, a handrail for that mm -hmm. especially before the snow comes yes <laughs> no. it will come yep so the handrail in that area we do have that on the list too to to get that along with re a couple of spring projects we had hanging out there is um repainting of some of the lines because when we repaved the painting didn't necessarily get done correctly and then we also had um some driveways in the cottage as well in the spring and uh i think that's it for some of our spring stuff but that, that's not waiting till the spring is it the no, the railing yeah. Well, we have it as like a spring prep. Well, spring okay, is spring, yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> yeah. So now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Gloria. Any ideas on where you're going to put the gazebo? So the gazebo is not um, a finalized project. Uh, the question was, are we, where are we putting the gazebo? I don't know if we are doing a gazebo. It's one of those things that was out there. Um, and to decide even to do it would be one thing, where to put it would be the other. So, any other questions? All right, so let's move on to cable. <laughs> so a couple of things. <laughs> so uh, with the cable, that, the cable switch over, um, I know it's been a learning curve for everybody. I, I certainly appreciate your patience. I think we're, I think people are getting it. I think we're seeing less and less. I, I know we still have um, things that we're working through and Corey's been very busy with a lot of that follow-up. Um, so part of the issue when they came in and did the cable was they cut a circuit which cut our hardwired internet. So people in the new north and the cottages had a hardwired internet um, option and that hardwired piece is no longer working because of something that they cut some circuit they cut when they switched over so for a repair for that um, is we approximately 30 days from today worst case scenario spectrum needs to come back and needs to install a new coax cable and Corey, you can jump in any time if, if I'm not <laughs> no, explaining you're good. this right. You got it. So up. Spectrum needs to come in and install that cable. That's the 30-day timeline, worst case scenario from today. So that service will be restored. In the meantime, Eddie Res is available. So Eddie Res is always available, um, as long as that's up and running, is always available um, to anybody who um, currently was hardwired and not being able to get internet. Eddie Res is available. However, um, 
there is uh, people are interested in adding some security with a VPN. So that could be a workaround if you are not if you're not comfortable u- using any res, you haven't been using any res, or you've been using um, your own hardwired network for for certain things. Um, you could get a VPN, which would be a monthly charge, but I think it's very small. One ninety nine, two ninety nine a month. Yeah. Yeah. So like two dollars and ninety nine cents a month. Um, we're hoping within a month our problem is solved, but if anybody has a concern over the next 30 days, Steve can help you establish um, that VPN connection. Did yeah. I explain that right? You did. The hardwired is why the in-house channels are not working. Ah, so in-house, Touchtown, not working because of that same hardwired issue. We're trying to come up with a workaround for that. Yep. So it so it doesn't last thirty days, but I'm not sure that we have one yet. Not yet. Okay. You can use the app though. Yeah. Right. App works. In house channel does not. The in house channel's on the app. It is. It, you could still go on the app. You could yep. still go on the app, but you're not going to get it on your TV. Yep. Yes. I've been getting more emails about cable boxes that haven't been returned. Oh. Yes. So you can ignore those, you can ignore the emails. So we've collected all the cable boxes. So it's, we have told people if you had a DVR box, hold on to it and you needed to return it. Um, if that didn't happen and when we did the switch over, we took your DVR box. At this point, we don't know what's a DVR box, what's not, they were all placed in the same room. But I can tell you, we've started returning all of them as of yesterday. I would say probably within a week, all of our boxes are gonna be returned. So it will be returned anyway. Um, but if you have a DVR box, that's the one you need to return. If you never had a DVR box and you're still getting letters about cable boxes need to be returned, please ignore them. Yes. Are you still accepting errant remotes? Yes. Yes. The question was, are you still accepting errant remotes? So yes, you have one. All right. Anything else on cable, internet? Yes. <laughs> You're getting your exercise today. Uh, is there any chance of adding an interactive program guide to the service that we now have? Seems to be a, a big gap there. Service. Yeah, if you couldn't hear, the question was about the interactive guide, which is lacking from our new program, um, and if there's any update. So Spectrum is definitely aware of it. Um, we've voiced our preference, um, but no update. I, I followed. Uh, I had there were uh, there were about three questions that I had reached out because also. <coughs> The channel listing that we gave all of you was the channel listing they sent me last June when we first started these. And over the time from last June to now, there are some channels that what it says is not what it is. The biggest one is Smithsonian Channel, says it's 35.5 or something like that. And it's actually RFD, which is like the rural farmers something or other. (laughs) Totally different, not even close. Um, so I, yesterday I was on the phone an hour with Spectrum Technical Support, sent them all my notes from the channel listings. I spent two, two portions of my day last week sitting in front of a TV going through all the channels (coughs) to see what they were, what was wrong based on the list that they sent. And, um, so I have five separate Spectrum tickets out there for each of the five communities and they called me last night at 6.15 and said, so we tweak things on our end, is it working? I said, I don't know, I'm not there. (laughs) So when I got in today, I had some time, I've sat in my office and watched TV, um, and it's still The job is very tough. It is, I got a tough job. Watch TV and play on computers. Um, So yeah, so there are still channels that it says we're supposed to get that we're not getting. Be aware too, which I wasn't, some of the sports channels, actually when you go to it, say there's nothing airing, but they only air 
when there's actually a game to air. So like the MSG, the Madison Square Garden two and three level will only show something if there's an actual game to show. I also asked them about what they were doing if they had an update on the guide and making it more user friendly and basically the answer was no. <laughs> that was the short answer. So again, anyone who wants a more interactive guide to see what's on, I encourage you to use like the TV Guide app or go to tvguide.com. Actually within our Touchtown app, our community app, there is a link to tvguide.com already with this zip code in it. The only difference is the channel numbers are based on what is the regular spectrum channel numbers and not our digital. So you really have to know your networks on what network you're looking for. Yes. Another feature I seem to be missing is before when you were watching a program and you wanted to pause it, you could. Now there's no pause. So you probably had a DVR box. Yeah. So yes, so yes. If you don't have a DVR box, there is no way to pause TV, live TV. So, yes. Before we had the on-demand capability. No on-demand. I really missed that. Is I know. On-demand is not available with this level of business service that Spectrum offers now, unfortunately. kind of wipes out everything I watch on TV. I know. It's over over the time since we started doing this, like the first community, it's really, I get people who approach me who are like, all right, sign me up with YouTube TV or Hulu Live or one of those, and they're happy again because they can record and pause and rewind and all of that. Or they're just like, you know what? I go back to reading more books now. I don't watch as much TV as I did, <laughs> which is sad, but unfortunately that's the way it is so yes is the lack of a guide, interactive guide function at the level that that what is subscribed to the reason i ask as, as an individual if spectrum came into my area with that service and expected me to pay for it i would cut it off right at the get-go because it's ridiculous you cannot find anything nope you don't know what you're watching on, on the channel until, you know, it doesn't even appear as the channel. Right, well that's the big thing I hear is if I come across the movie, I don't know how long's it been on for, what the title is, who's in it, when it's gonna end. I, believe me, I, I have been hearing this since June. I believe it. Um, and we relay this to Spectrum and honestly, they don't care. But is it available at a higher level? I mean, no, this is the this is part of the issue is all they are offering business bulk accounts. bulk accounts like ours is this enterprise system they call it. So when I've had so I belong up in Glens Falls, I belong to, you know, different Facebook community groups. And there's been more people even at like apartment complexes in that area who are saying, does my landlord have the right of my apartment complex to tell me this is my cable service and this is, and pre-charge me and my rent and everything? Because that's what Spectrum is starting to roll out to them as well. So. There's no competition. <clears throat> no, exactly. I mean, that's what we looked at when, where it all started was really, we were out of contract with Spectrum. We had to renew our contracts um, and then, Timing, I guess, was unfortunate when we were out of contract. This is what they presented us and said, this is the option. We did look. We looked at, you know, something through DirecTV, but it was all satellite dishes. Um, so we were a little worried about things with satellite and weather and them not working. Um, so we did explore some other options, but honestly, this was the best one as far as channel lineup, the number of channels we were going to get, um, and reliability. I don't know whether you were involved in the negotiations or whether that was higher up, but was the amount of money available, I'm just coming up with an alternative. Mm -hmm. I mean, if people, there are so many of these streaming services that you would get a lot of the channels that you want. Mm -hmm. If the money was sufficient, 
to allow people to at least get a subsidy for whatever streaming service they wanted, that might be a viable option. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know at first we looked at if people wanted to opt out of the cable service as part of like what we offer, but it really wasn't it wasn't substantial. So it wasn't anything that we were offering like an opt out, buy out, like your meals, things like that. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. like Corey said, I mean, you read more because the TV is so yeah. frustrating mm -hmm. to find anything. It was frustrating before to find anything worthwhile most of the time, but. Yep. Now it's impossible. Yep. Yes. If you have to go to the hospital, take your list with you because both St. Peter's and Ellis are using the same system. So it's a, okay. Yeah. So it's the same channels. Um, yeah, and I compare <coughs> to you know you go to a hotel which could be right down the street from your house, and it's the same thing. All the channels are different. Nothing's the same. Um, no interactive guide, you know, and that's kind of the package that they're offering to their bulk accounts. Yeah. Yes. What sources did you look at other than Spectrum? Um, I they were different names, but they were pretty much dish-based services. I can't remember anything else that Verizon. Verizon is in dish. So, so the the main issue. Oh, sorry, shock. <laughs> So the main issue with Verizon, it is not available to all areas, and Trinity was very specific. We had to go with a company that would supply all areas. So that included, yes, hospitals down here, as well as like Glen Highland up in Queensbury. Um, so that was part of the problem with going with Verizon Fios. Plus it would also require, because that works off of fiber optics, a lot of rewiring of buildings so slow would have slowed down the process as well as been very expensive all right anything else yes Trinity seems to be a pretty big customer but yet spectrum seems to be dictating um what was that I didn't hear. Trinity seems to be a big customer, but spec why is Spectrum dictating to Trinity? Because, because Trinity is a big company, but Spectrum's parent company is bigger than Trinity. That's what it comes down to. They're owned by Charter Communications, which is even a bigger business than Trinity. So, yes. <laughs> it seems to be it's all a matter of money. Oh, yeah. And the package you box is unsatisfactory. I mean, I think to some degree it is a matter of money. That doesn't mean that it, if they were the cheapest, we didn't look elsewhere. But if it were rewiring an entire building, that wasn't an option either. Do you know, do you know what I mean? It, it's somewhere in the middle. Yes, money, money is a factor, but it is with anything, really. I don't know if that makes sense or answers your question, but makes sense. <laughs> yes. I don't know anything either about this, but I've been hearing a lot about it with Eddie Reds. Yeah. Um, a lot of people didn't realize that it's not a secure system. It, and I'm wondering why we don't have a secure system for a place like this. Do you want to talk about <laughs> Eddie Reds security? <clears throat> So Eddie Res, I know when a lot of people go on and they log on and it'll say connected weak security. So it is a secure network. Yes, it shares the same password across all five of our communities, but there is still firewall protection on it. And there is the, the problem is, and I'm going to be as frank as I can. Our corporate did not feel with the network that all of you were using that to put the type of security on it could stop you going from the sites you wanted to go to. It would block. So there are sites that if we wanted to go to on our work computers, Trinity blocks those. If we put the type of security that would change it to not say weak security, there would be sites you couldn't get to. And I won't I won't name the types of sites well, I that... Well, can give an example. <laughs> there you go. A clean example. A clean example, yes. <laughs> so, for example, we have a joke every, every uh, meeting. 
I can't go on my work computer and Google jokes, jokes for seniors, jokes. I can't do that. It blocks every single site that I go for jokes. I have to do it on my cell phone, forward it over, but um, but just that's just one example right. of if we start putting those security levels in, it limits people's access to what they can go to. Um, but yeah, there there is still securities that are in place. It's just not it's not the same as if you went to a Starbucks right. and logged on to their correct. Yeah, it, it's Wi-Fi. it's certainly safer than if you went like Paula said to Starbucks and logged on to their website or their Wi-Fi to use it and everything. It's not truly a public network. It's still a private network, but your computer is still going to see it. So that's why it's important to have virus protection and malware protection still on your computer. Um, But it is, you know, it is still a a relatively secure network. so. Okay. <laughs> yes. One last observation. I have Norton. Norton has a VPN. Turn it on. Turn it off. Built-in. Norton VPN. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a VPN adds additional security, correct? Yes. A v- Basically, a VPN works on a either a public network so you could be out at Starbucks and use your VPN to get to where you wanted to go or on our site basically it creates a private tunnel for your information only to go in and out of um, a VPN uh, though can what is a VPN what, what is it no, but when I, what is it a physical thing or what? what no, it's it? a it's a, a, a subscription based, web based, or sometimes they're software based that you can add to a computer. Sort of like Norton's or McAfee or something, just downloading something. Yeah, Norton, there's there's Norton ones out there. Hmm. What's that? Norton has it as an option. Yep, Norton has an option that you can add to it. I will tell you, um, VPNs tend to slow down your streaming speed, though, too. So, and with a VPN, everything you use, you have to go through that VPN if you want it to be. So, your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your desktop, all of that. So... A voice of reason, please. <laughs> when you talk VPNs, virtual private network. Virtual private network, correct. Uh, really designed to deal with the internet, the big global network. Right. And they work, they're very good. Yep. But be aware that they do not address an issue that we have here but in the any system. And that is the connection between your computers and your printers. If it is a wired cabled connection to your printer, you're gold. Right. If it is Wi Fi, then some VPNs will cover it, some won't. Right. You use the term tunneling. Right. It's a variable tunneling. The more the more of these features you get with the VPN, the more protection you can do. Correct. But I I think there's a possibility that some people here who thought they were printing a check on their computer and it printed somewhere else in the Mm -hmm. Eddie system. And you don't know where it went. In general, rule of thumb, if you can hardwire your printer to your computer, your laptop, even if you want to print from an iPad and you can get a cable and plug into your iPad before you print, I highly recommend that. Amen. Amen. Yes, yeah, so much better. You're not going to get stuff on your device. You're not going to be setting stuff on others. The other that falls into that is smart TVs. Because now as more people have moved to smart TVs with this conversion, people are seeing, oh, I can stream from my phone or my tablet. And I was trying to help someone connect to their TV I could see the fire stick that's in my name that's up at Glen Highland because it's all the same network. So I was trying to help someone at Glen Eddy stream from his iPad to his TV 
and a TV up at Glen Highland and the cottages kept going, connect to Charles's computer. Here's the code for Charles's. <laughs> and she said something to me and I said, oh, I know who Charles is, it's okay. <laughs> so our, that's the worst thing about our network is it creates all these, we're like one big house and everybody is on and can see other devices. So. All right. Um, we could have a whole class on that yes. if we needed it. Um, a couple of other outstanding projects I want to mention. So we do have um, the erosion study piece that was being done on the um, <clears throat> off the fire road, that hill. So we've received all of the, we had to hire an engineer to come up with a plan. All of those plans have been approved by the town of Bethlehem. The next step is um, that same engineer is going to design the request um, for proposals to send that out to at least two different vendors to get that price. But we anticipate that that um, and to get that quote and scope of work, and we anticipate that that will be starting soon. So um, more to come with that. Um, also outstanding is we did hire an engineer to do a generator study. So still waiting. I, I got the report today, um, but we're still going to meet to to go through what. Um, that report says, but hasn't been forgotten and still working on that. Um, the sewer building. So uh, there's been some questions about what we can do to kind of camouflage that building. They did come on site this week. They said that we cannot plant any trees, any bushes, anything with um, substantial roots <coughs> cannot be planted there. Um, they did say we could put a fence around um, which we'll look into doing and we could certainly plant flowers, but nothing like we had originally proposed to them. Um, <clears throat> they said that that wouldn't be allowed. Um, also part of um, some of the issues with this is we had Mike McDonough here who several of you've met. He held a divisional position, um, a maintenance divisional position. That position um, no longer exists. Mike McDonough is now at Our Lady of Mercy as the facilities director there. Um, so it was a bit of a handoff, so I met with him today just to, not that I wasn't aware of what he was doing, but he was the contact person. So just changing those contact persons and making sure um, that the people that we're working on with these projects know that they should be contacting myself or Tim. Can you yes. put a mural on the building? Put a mural on the building. Well, we didn't ask that question, but we can certainly, I don't see why they would have a, well, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> the question was, can we put a mural on the building? Yeah. What building are you talking about? So the new sewer pump building that's on the fire road. What's wrong with it the way it exists now? It's great. Well, it's there, but other people don't want to look at it. Well, look in another direction. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one solution. <laughs> yes. I look at it every morning. Why don't you paint it green if people don't like it white? One's in with the other green. So it's not our building to do what we want with. I just have to put that out there that the town owns it. So anything we do, we do have to have their permission. Um, so this is as far as we've gotten. I can certainly ask about painting it. I, I don't know. I don't know what they'll say. Yes. With regard to the generators. Yeah. That you're looking at. There's a piece of legislation in the New York State Legislature right now looking to make uh, National Grid responsible to provide electricity to customers who have uh, medical needs that would require electricity. It's in there now, but I think the polls don't know where it's going or what's going to happen. But it would be interesting to see whether that's applicable to uh, a community like this versus mm -hmm. private individuals. Yeah, if you couldn't hear the comment, it was there's proposed legislation out there now about National Grid being responsible for providing electricity to people who may have uh, medical, medical needs. needs. So um, thank you. Good information to know. All right, um, I think that's it for the announcements. Oh no, a couple of other things. Oh, automatic withdrawal or automatic payments that have been set up. There was an issue this month, but as of yesterday, it's been resolved. 
So usually those payments are withdrawn on the 15th of every month. That didn't happen on the 15th, it happened yesterday. So just wanted to let you know it was resolved. Google Forms, so submitting a work order online. Um, there was, uh, we've heard the last couple of weeks there's been extra security added like a CAPTCHA, which means select every picture with a traffic light in it. Select every picture with a bike. We didn't do that. We didn't add that extra security on there, so we're trying to figure out if it's a touchdown issue or a Google issue who added that. Um, so more to come on that, but we're looking into it. Um, newspapers that are for the lobby, I guess um, please don't cut things out of them because they're for everybody, just <laughs> saying out there. Um, Transportation, timeliness of departures. Please make sure if you have a time and a pickup time that you're on time. If it's for a trip, especially make sure that um, you know, you're there at the departure time. Um, if, you know, it, 10 minutes might not seem like a big deal, but 10 minutes some days can throw off everything, especially if you're going on a trip and it's 10 minutes um, late, people might miss something that they were expecting when you get there. So. Um, just be mindful of that. And uh, our occupancy, occupancy in our independent living is very good. Um, we're at 96.4%. We have seven unsold units here. Our terrace is completely full and our nursing home is completely full as of today, don't blink. Um, so, <laughs> so very good, we're in, uh, we're in a good shape and the sales and marketing continues to work very hard for that. Um, I'm ready for a joke if anybody doesn't have any other questions. All right. <clears throat> All right, so a young man wanted to invite his girlfriend to their farm but was embarrassed by the old-fashioned outdoor outhouse. He kept bickering with his dad to get a modern one with indoor plumbing, but his dad didn't give in. Out of sheer desperation, he slips out one night and with a huge shove, pushes the entire outhouse down the hill. Afterward, afterwards, it was still intact, but it was at the bottom of the hill and he knew it would be too damaged to drag it, drag it back up. The next morning at breakfast, his father asks him who destroyed the outhouse and at the same time reminds him of the story of George Washington and the cherry tree. <laughs> yes, dad, sighed the boy, it was me. I'm glad you're so honest, said his father. And as punishment, you have to start digging the pit for a new one immediately. But dad, protests the boy, when George Washington admitted to it that he cut down the tree, his father didn't punish him. Yes, you're right, said the father, but George's dad wasn't in the cherry tree when he cut it down. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon.